and welcome back to my channel and to a new video today uh, you can probably hear the river in the background um, because today I am at it's called Fingal Woods and it is a wooden truss woods on the edge of Dartmoor and the reason I am here is there's actually two reasons the first reason is I've got my camera so we're going to be trying to take some wildlife photographs and the second reason is because this is actually going to be the location of my photography exhibition which is going to be in May um, and I'm basically here to scope out the area make a few plans see what's what kind of and write a couple of notes stuff like that about um, where I'm gonna put things and stuff like that and if you didn't know about my photography exhibition I essentially I won a competition last year with the Woodland Trust hence why this is a Woodland Trust wood um, and it's going to be a photography exhibition focusing on a couple like five hidden species that I have photographed over the past year and a bit essentially um, and I, you can watch the I've won a competition I made a video about it um, and I'll link it below or above or whatever um, and you can check that out but yeah essentially today is all about scoping out the area, seeing what's here, and also maybe photographing some wildlife as well. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoy this week's video, and I will catch up with you all in a little while once I've had a walk around, and we'll see what is here. I thought I saw a bird on a rock over there. Um, but it turns out it's a twig and now I'm, I almost, I tripped over as well. I was so excited, I was like, oh my God, there's a bird on that rock. Um, it's a, it's not moved in at least 10 minutes, so I believe it is either a twig or another rock. And now I'm just uh, disappointed. Um, yeah, that, that's the whole message. I have kind of left the river behind now. I did walk up and back kind of down it again for a little while. I didn't see anything interesting which is kind of a shame because sometimes you get kingfishers and dippers on the river. Um, there wasn't any today. I have also swapped to my macro lens now because I did see kind of an interesting um, beetle next to the river. I, there is a type of beetle that is like very rare except it's found on Dartmoor. I don't know if that's what I saw. Um, I'll do some like IDing when I get back home. But yeah, now I'm heading further into the forest. Sorry, this is a really steep hill. Um, and I'm going to be looking at things for my kind of exhibition. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about what my plan is for that. Um, once I've caught my breath, it just keeps going up this bit. Probably won't put it on the hill. But yeah, I'll catch up with you in a minute. Okay, so I've just stopped to have a drink because honestly, that hill was massive. Um, <coughs> um, I'm not even all the way up to the top of the woodland yet. Um, I don't think my exhibition is going to be on this track because that was a massive climb. Uh, maybe on the way down it would be better, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I thought I would talk a little bit about my um, exhibition, what it is actually about. Um, and essentially it is a project that I'm calling Hidden Species. Um, and I chose five species, five British um, wildlife species that are kind of, you don't see day to day, nobody really knows much about them. Uh, some of them, they have a negative public image um, and it's just ones that you either don't notice day to day, day, to day you don't see um, because they're nocturnal or whatever, um, things like that. Uh, so the five that I have kind of chosen is, f firstly, the inspiration behind the whole thing came from um, my love of the hazel dormouse. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I go on quite a lot of dormouse surveys. I've actually got a license as well for them. Um, 
and that is kind of species number one and then I meant the next one is like slow worms it was it was gonna be like a, a like either the adder or a grass snake however they're less common than slow worms and so if even though um, you don't see them very often unless you purposely like you know where they are like they like compost heaps if you have a compost heap you've probably seen one um, but most people haven't seen one and most people don't really know much about them but they are actually really common to see if you put down the right habitat um, so that's kind of species number two and then the next one is bats specifically the pipistrelli bat um, but in general I wanted to include all bats because um, nobody really nobody outside of like people who like bats to distinguish between bat breeds bat like breeds or species in the UK um, <laughs> so the Pipistrelli bat is the one I'm including because that's the one I've got the most pictures of um, but it kind of covers all bats and then the next one is redwood ant which um, I, I decided to include an ant because firstly one of my favorite biologists um, is Edward O. Wilson and he he was like a, a really good entomologist um, and he did lots of work with ants and he wrote lots of books about ants and he's just been one of my favorite biologists for forever basically and there nobody like you can people know what an ant looks like but they couldn't say what type of ant that is and so the one that I'm including is called the redwood ant and it is my favorite type of ant which is saying something because I <laughs> I also I have like a love-hate relationship with ants um, in that I appreciate them they look cool they build amazing structures and they're a really cool species however if I spend too long um, stood next to like an ant colony um, I kind of feel itchy and I kind of start thinking about that scene in Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull I think where somebody gets eaten by termites and it, <laughs> it kind of at that stage I have to leave um, but I do I do like ants and I like photographing I'll put all the pictures of the species I'm talking about on the screen so you can kind of see what I'm talking about and then the final species is um, moths or oh it's gone really dark on me I'm sorry if you can't see me anymore I don't know what the camera is doing um, that's better but the final species is like moths um, specifically the buff tip moth which is my absolute favorite type of moth it has amazing camouflage um, and that's the one that's gonna kind of focus in the exhibition there's gonna be big photographs of that one however I'm also going to include a couple of small pictures of different types of moth because nobody really appreciates moths they're not butterflies they're just they're, nobody likes them really <laughs> um, they don't get the same attention as butterflies but they are I, I think there are some really really cool moths um, my sister's scared of moths but so you know I'm going to include one to just to annoy her um, but I feel like moths need a bit more attention so that's the one I'm going for um, and that is the five species that I'm going to include in my exhibition and the idea is that there will be several large pictures of each species um, hanging up in the forest because that's where the exhibition is um, and there will also be like an interactive activity or like interactive information um, about each one as well where the pictures are so that it engages not just like people can go and look at the pictures but also children and um, young people or like me <laughs> if, if I went to an exhibition and there was um, interactive bits I'm gonna I'm gonna use it I'm gonna play with it um, so yeah it's just to make it more fun and engaging for everyone really but yeah that is my plan for the exhibition I was gonna I don't know if I should talk about like species that I was going to I thought about include maybe I'll make another video about um, when it's when it's like live or whatever when it's when it's done in the in May I'll make another video um, I'm gonna make a walkthrough one and then maybe I'll make one about talking about the whole process of holding an exhibition in the forest because it's it's quite unusual really um, but yeah that is the point of what I'm, the exhibition it's called Hidden Species um, you can go and see it actually you'll be able to come here if you're local to Devon why not come check it out um, but yeah that is the plan and I have kind of caught my breath now so I'm going to keep walking around the forest and kind of planning and talk you through kind of what I'm imagining is going to be in the forest um, so yeah let's keep going okay I literally 
I just got up from there. I know I was go I said I was gonna like keep walking. However, I have just seen what I'm gonna call the smallest bee I have ever seen. I didn't know it was a bee. I had to Google what it was. Um, Cause it looked like a bee, but it was about the same size as like a tiny fly. Um, and it says it is a mining bee. And I think I've got a really cute photograph of it. I'm, I will show you, it's like flying around now though. And um, I don't want to annoy it too much. I've already shoved the camera in its face. I don't think it needs me to, to shove another one in its face. But yeah, I've just seen the world's smallest bee that I have ever seen. Well, probably not the world's smallest bee, the smallest bee I have ever seen. Um, and I'll show you the photograph. But yeah, let's keep walking now. So I was just about to turn around and head back down this track uh, because I passed some people and I was like, can you, does this track loop around? And they were like, no, it just keeps going higher. And I was like, yeah, okay, I'll go back down and uh, I'll go along the other track to have a look at which one would be best for my exhibition. But as I turned around, I saw this right here, um, which is a redwood ant colony. Um, I'm going to show you a close-up in a second once I finish filming this because I don't want to stand right next to it uh, for for whilst talking because I'm slightly, as I mentioned, the whole Indiana Jones crystal skull uh, termite thing, this is giving flashbacks. Um, but I'll show you because it's really cool and there, what is happening is they basically emerge in the spring or they come or they wake up kind of in the springtime and they all take it in turns in coming out of the colony and warming up and then going back in again. Um, so they're essentially warming, warming back up again, um, and that's what's happening here. So I'll show you. So all of that is ants. Ants. More ants. There is literally thousands of ants. They all, they're all going along here as well. Presumably foraging for stuff, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that is a ton of ants right there. Also, saying that, this is the ant um, species that I just mentioned and the one that's going to feature in my exhibition um, because they're a really cool ant species, I really like them um, and I, I'll explain why I like them in... I've like, I've like put it in a couple of... Um, in another video but yeah, this is the ant species that I'm going to focus on in as one of my hidden species in my exhibition so it's kind of good that they are in the woodland that the exhibition is going to be in so maybe I should try and put their picture next to the um, colony because that makes sense This tree, like there. I don't know if you can see it. It's just sat there. Okay, guys. So I'm just walking back down the path that I've been on for like the last half hour or whatever, and I'm gonna go and have a look at the other path. Um, but I just wanted to talk about what I'm kind of looking for today. Um, and essentially, the, I explained kind of the layout of the exhibition but essentially all the photographs are going to be printed onto like canvas massive canvas um, and then tied between the trees is what I'm thinking because um, firstly because it's cheaper to get canvas prints made than like board prints and then have to and then have to like put them all up um, and secondly the well to put them all up if, if it was all like massive board photographs and you had to like hammer posts into the ground that is quite a lot of work whereas if it's just a canvas and there's like little eyelets in all of the pockets you can just use rope or whatever to tie them into the trees and also with canvas it is way easier to transport them 
and if I needed to move anything it's way easier than if you put something in the ground you can't really remove it again um, easily. So what I'm kind of looking for is areas where there's a, like a small bit off the path where the interactive bit could go and then trees close enough together that could hang um, canvas prints on and then maybe another space for like some information to go as well um, but yeah that's really what I'm looking for today so yeah let's have a look at this other path I'm just I'm almost there now um, and we'll have a look down there and then I'll probably call it a day for today because I've been out for quite a while actually and I'm kind of kind of getting hungry uh, and I already had my water snack earlier so yeah we'll probably call it a day after exploring the other path but let's see how that goes getting ready to record the final part of this video um, as you can see I'm right back next to the river again I have just seen a kingfisher so they are here um, earlier I mentioned that I hadn't seen any um, there's meant to be dippers on this river as well um, I've just seen a kingfisher basically just zip past um, up the river and I can't my this path doesn't go all the way along the river um, not that I can actually see where it went other than around following the river more um, but yeah good to see that they are here and that there's a possibility of seeing one next time um, I'll stop here actually <laughs> before I try and get there's like loads of tree roots here before I trip over um, but yeah I, I am pretty happy with how today's kind of visit has gone um, I'm sorry there's not much like there's not much organization in this video is so, um, no cohesiveness really it's all kind of slightly random um, and it's not actually I didn't talk about my what I was photographing I photographed like the the bee and the ants but I didn't actually talk about it um, which is I mean it's okay because this this wasn't a kind of photography this was a planning video for my exhibition and um, but yeah as a as a kind of scope out of the location for my exhibition um, like I have been here before but now I I went today with kind of the mind of planning and kind of what I wanted to do and where um, it's been pretty successful I've written quite a lot of notes um, in my notebook and we also got to see yeah I also got to see some cool insects which was nice and a kingfisher just then as well so that was nice as well um, but yeah I hope you have enjoyed today's video and this will be the first of, or it's not really the first, the, this is like, this video will be one of many in the series that I'm making about my exhibition. So hopefully if you, I don't know, if you're planning an exhibition you can watch these and they might find them helpful, otherwise they're just a bit of fun really, isn't it? Um, but really it's for me so that I can remember um, what will be hopefully my first of many um, no my first um photography exhibition um i won't say i won't say it of many um but yeah my first one so hopefully this will be a fun video to look back on if i ever do another one so yeah uh i will catch you all next week for a new video i yeah and um, that's it oh like and subscribe if you want to um i've hit 250 subscribers so yay go me um Although that is probably, it would probably help if I posted more <laughs> cohesively of my videos. So that is what I'm planning to do actually as well from this week. I am planning every Sunday there will be a new video every Sunday. I'm not going to skip um, months like I have previously. And there might also be a couple of bonus videos on Wednesdays as well. That is my plan going forward and I'm going to stick to it. Fingers crossed that I stick to that. It's kind of difficult with wildlife because it's no, not predictable, but you know, fingers crossed that we can stick to every Sunday a new video. Mm -hmm.